All right, so we're gonna hope this uh, takes less time to do than than last night. Um, so I kind of wanted to go ahead and just keep up the momentum a little bit and go ahead and post um, kind of a second part about studying jazz. I realize I've gone through over some of this stuff already uh, in other videos, and so there's gonna be overlap between what I'm talking about now and what I'm talking what I talked about in the past so um, you can either go into the playlists and look at uh, jazz posts and look at the overlap or you can just assume that the new stuff is better if you want and you can just listen to the new stuff um, so I think the thing I wanted to talk about I talked about yesterday how we kind of divide practice into three sections and we have um, learning music we have practicing technique, practicing drills, and then we have the fun part. So, um, and, you know, and I, I've thought about it, and there's other things that you could add into that. You know, you could add in performance as part of, part of study, uh, even though performance is also sort of taking the study and applying it. Um, you could look at, you know, there's other things that you could look at, but I think We'll stick to those three. Seems pretty good. And so the second one, I want to talk about studying tech, the technical part of jazz. And the first thing to say is that a lot of people don't like or are intimidated by jazz theory. And it's certainly not just simple. It takes a, takes a while to learn. But it's not the end of the world either. And sometimes people in jazz make it worse than they than they should. One thing I've never liked is people in jazz will give people a list of like 20 different scales with, you know, with like different scale patterns, like 20 of them. And they'll say, yeah, learn those in all 12 keys, you know. And so then you're like, well, you know, okay, I know like... I learned a few of them in all, t in all 12 keys, now what do I do with them? You know, like, what's the application? What, you know, what's the point? And it's stuff like that that, that, that that's a mistake. So, um, I was thinking about, the first thing I think I was thinking about is a lot of people who play jazz very frequently use, um, like, licks, like horn licks and stuff, so that you play, like, a pattern that isn't just a scale going up and down but it's like uh you know like a like a melodic fragment or something like that and then you're going to hear a lot of that in jazz and there are lots of books uh, the one that always comes to mind for me because it was big when i was younger was patterns for jazz uh, which which is sold in both treble clef and um bass clef editions so that if you want to practice patterns for jazz you can you know buy stuff you can buy that and you can you can do that that's a good one um, there's other stuff out there now um, where people have compiled jazz licks and stuff you can also study specific people you can study the solos of Louis Armstrong or the solos of Charlie Parker uh, in some cases I think people have transcribed like Clifford Brown and they've you know so you can go and you can look at um, like some some guy's interpretation of a solo like um and look at transcriptions that that can be a good thing to do i mean just off the top of my head if you're really thinking about studying bebop heavily getting the charlie parker omni book and studying charlie parker solos is a really good idea um anybody who is in jazz w would benefit from looking at the louis armstrong uh solo uh collections uh, because Louis Armstrong is kind of like, he's one of the masterminds of jazz. He was a very early mastermind of jazz. So you, and one of the things about Louis Armstrong that I find, at least, I think that my impression of him is that harmonically his stuff is pretty simple. But he was an incredible virtuoso in terms of speed and also in terms of range. He could play really, really high on that cornet. And, um, and, and he could sustain high notes, not just play them, but sustain them for long periods and jump to them and, and, and very clear, very clearly step between them and stuff. Uh, and 
so the guy just will blow you away. And and the thing is, um, the younger generation of Louis, uh, of jazz players doesn't necessarily always think of Louis Armstrong when they think of jazz. I certainly wasn't introduced to him very well when I first um, started. So those are things you can start to do. Um, the other two things that, that come to mind technically in jazz are scales and chords. Um, I've talked about already in this video and I've talked about before that I don't like the method of throwing you know essentially you know 200 scales at somebody and saying learn them all um, and I think one of the things to get started with for people whose theory is pretty rudimentary is chords um, I can talk a little bit about that and it might be good at some point for me to add a uh, video of the piano because you can see it visually on the piano really good all in black and white um, but there's really chords are, are, are generally considered triads built-in triads um, root position chords are triads and uh, okay so I'm trying to do this in the simplest way possible you start with a with a root position chord you start with triads and there are four types of triads. There are major chords, there are minor chords, there are diminished chords, and then there's a kind of chord that you're not gonna see too often except as an alteration of, of chords, and that's gonna be the uh, augmented chord. So you've got, um, and so a, um, so uh, with, a, uh, with a major chord, you have a major third and a perfect fifth. With a minor chord, you have a minor third and a perfect fifth. And then with the diminished chords, you have a minor third and a diminished fifth. And then with an augmented chord, you have a major third and a augmented fifth. Uh, so those are your basics. Those are your basic triads. And those triads appear in all, all the possible keys. And then in jazz, very frequently, we don't use triads, we use seventh chords. Um, so that then you're gonna add another interval on top of the three that you already started with. Okay, so th that's a lot of theory in, in a very short amount of time. And I'm not showing it to you on a whiteboard, which has been suggested. And um, I've kind of, kind of dumped that suggestion for the moment because I felt like it would be, I don't know, I felt it would be awkward and I don't have a lot of time because I, I found that because of um, data compression issues, I really don't have like just all the time in the world to talk. And the other thing is it's not enjoyable to, to, to watch a video that goes on and on and on either. So I don't know, I, I've kind of like decided, I think maybe having a visual reference on the piano will be the right thing to do, but I'm gonna to have to get a couple of things together before I can really um, sufficiently put together a piano reference for you guys. But but the basic deal is, since this is a vlog and since I'm doing the best I can with this, that we have four triads and then you add sevenths on top of them and they become different chords. And so you have a major seventh chord, you have a dominant seventh chord, you have a minor seventh chord, and then and you have a minor major seventh chord, and so on and so forth. That there's a lot more permutations, or com there's not permutations, a lot more com combinations of chords when you use sevenths because you can add the seventh that you're adding on top of the the, the original three notes can be altered, it can change a lot. And then in and and one of the things about this particular thing I, I really recommend getting with the teacher but if you can't get with the teacher or you just won't get with the teacher get a book and learn the chords learn basic chords and um, or get on a site that's really really specific on the internet that's going to go into this stuff in a much more detailed and simplistic fashion than I'm doing right now okay because I'm not teaching lessons I would charge for that so basically you've got um, the, a certain s seven chords are the, the, the fundamental chords in jazz really 
And then there's when you add other notes to the seventh chords, you're, you're, they're sort of called extensions. Uh, and those notes are called extensions. And extended chords are used a lot in jazz as well. And um, that's where your tone color comes in and sort of where the art of it comes in. I talked about playing thirds and sevenths a lot and, and accompanists in, in jazz, people in the rhythm section play a lot. Of, it's the bass player usually plays root and fifth and then the harmonic instruments usually play thirds and sevenths. And then there's going to be other altered tones added in there to, to give it some color and some interest. And then the soloist or the person playing, you know, the person, the people playing the, me the melodic part are going to be influenced by whatever the people in the rhythm section are doing. They're going to listen back to what the har harmony, to what the harmonies are. So I think chords are the place to start. Instead of starting with, with 200 some scales or whatever ridiculous thing somebody came up with that you have to learn, uh, don't do that. Start with chords and then you can play off the chords. You know, if you're playing a solo and you see C7 and you know the chord, you know that it has a C and E, a G and a B flat in it. And then you can say, well, I can play E, F sharp and G E is the third of the chord, G is the fifth of the chord, and F sharp is in between the two. And I've got myself a little, a little piece of something to play. And I and I don't look like a fool because now I know the chord, right? And, and that's all you have to do, really. Uh, in some respects, I mean, eventually you want to take your soloing to a level where it becomes really natural and it becomes inspired. But but as you're learning, the, the the essence of it is I've 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 got a few notes to play. I'm not I don't feel panicked because I just see the chord and I think, well, I know what the chord is and so I can just play. And then you know also you also as your ear gets better, you'll you'll say, Oh yeah, I hear that this guy is doing a certain thing with this particular chord progression. And then by listening back to what he's playing, you can say, Well, I know in this instance that with those particular sounds, th these particular sounds on my horn or, or, you know, whatever instrument it is that I'm playing the melodic line on, then those particular sounds are going to fit with the accompanist, with the rhythm section. All right, so I'm trying to make sense out of all this. And I think that the, the big thing that to, to point out, I think, is that it's not that learning scales is bad, it's just... It, it's good. You need to learn them eventually. It's just that getting started with, with, you know, obviously getting really just started like, okay, I know what a major scale is. That's important to know. I know what a, I, I know that there are minor scales and there are alterations to the minor scales. That's important to know. And I, and I know that I, and I know that some tunes make use of the church modes that eventually will be important to know That's I talked about that being kind of semester two. And then, and then I, I know what the basic chords, the basic seventh chords are. So when someone throws the seventh chord at me, I, I know what I'm hearing and I also know what I'm seeing on the page. I, I know that I'm looking at F, F uh, minor seven flat five and I know what that is. I know it's a form of diminished chord. I know what the basic notes in the chord are and I can play something because I know. That's the basic idea. And I call that the chord method of, of improvisation, and I'm not the only person in jazz who's ever used it. Charlie Parker didn't think in scales a lot. As a for example, he used to play intervals, he played intervals on top of, of on top of the uh, as a, as a soloist. So that's basically your first and second semester of technical drills. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop here. These. Actually, these videos take a while to upload now, and uh, I'm trying to because they're larger, uh, because they have better, because uh, they have uh, better resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sign off.